hey, it's Wabbit. So this started out as this grand idea. And when I got done recording, it took about 50 minutes. I'm like, I got to cut this thing down. So I'm going to do a little narration over a portion that I kept for this video and do the same thing and try and keep this fairly short. I bought this Drum Brute Impact a few weeks ago and it's been sitting under the desk. I wasn't really sure how to use it. And it was obviously bought used and wasn't really sure what the workflow would be for this until I saw a video that gave me an idea. Now here I'm checking out this cord because I'm a fan of using the ripcord. You'll see a couple of spots here later on, but I'm just checking to see what the voltage is. And sure enough, I think I've got something that will work. So anyway, this video that I saw used the drum brute with a pedal. I'll mention this later on in the video in case you don't get to that point, but basically the drum brute, it's an analog drum machine that has, you have to work with what you have. Doing these on a white desk is not a good thing. Anyway, here's me getting the ripcord that I believe will work. We'll test that out later. It's these four ports in the back that I can actually take these individual out. And what I want to do is run those into the iPad. I don't have a pedal. And I thought, maybe I can do that. So I start gathering up all the equipment. And one of the things when you watch a YouTube video, you rarely see the setup. It's always everything looks nice and tidy and you just push some buttons and play. Yeah. <laughs> it uh, requires some things to be put together. So I'm just basically thinking, okay, I need to have a 3.5 millimeter cable, which I got here, and they need to have another end to go into the Rodecaster. I also have to use a USB-C cable as I have trouble focusing here. I'm like, forget it, fine, whatever. But you get the idea. That's going to connect the iPad to the Rodecaster Pro. So that's just the back of the Arteria saying, yep, I got a 12 volt rip cord. So in theory, that should work. Now the back of the Rodecaster Pro has combo XLR jacks. That will allow me to do what I want to do, but there's only four inputs. I'll talk more about that later. And then there's the USB-C input. Number one is something that really is cool. We'll talk about that later as well too. So basically I just hooked that up to the iPad. And I need to do that because I need to bring the audio from the drum brute to the Rodecaster and then the Rodecaster to the iPad to do what I want to try and do. So this cable here is connecting the main mix out in the back of the drum brute. That will go into the Rodecaster Pro. So basically those four inputs, if you run cables, you can just separate those particular instruments and then the other remaining will go. Let's see if we can get some power on with this rip cord. Flip the switch and bingo. It looks like, no, we are in business. So no issues there. So here I'm just now testing, do I have audio? So major win, uh, that was kind of the first experiment. Can I even get this to work. And in theory, again, it should work. So basically now it is hooking those individual outs using that cable that I showed. And again, it just varies on what you have and it varies on the interface you have in terms of what the cable you need. These are just things that I have learned over time. Uh, it varies. That's why I don't like giving out, hey, get this cable because it's, it's so user specific in, in terms of, of what you do. So again, the idea, the experiment is I need to use the iPad in my particular case, because again, I don't have a pedal and I want to run those individual tracks or outputs into the iPad and use the iPad basically as a pedal. Now I saw a video where someone was using the drum brute and their iPad, but their interface was a Steinberg and I can't remember the model is like a $700 device. It's no longer available. You can buy it used, but they're still not cheap. Now there are options, but again, as the opening title says, it's trying to work with what I have. That is really the goal of this thing here. I've already got a device as an audio interface. I know it has these inputs. So can this in theory work? And that's really what the goal of what I'm trying to do here. Now, I will repeat this later on in the video. 
this is not me saying you have to do this. This is not me pushing that this is the way to do it. I think this is a cool part of this space is we have the opportunity to, if we have the gear, see other different ways of making things work. Then if something doesn't work, then you have to figure out, okay, why doesn't it work? Or are there limitations if, if it's something is able to work? And then decide from there what to do. Do I get a dedicated interface? And again, I'll talk more about my findings later on in the video. Or is what I have something that will allow me to just work with it? In case you don't want to watch the end of the video, I'll just say it here now that this does work. I will demonstrate that later on. There are some limitations. Again, I will point those out, but in case you just don't want to watch any more of this, basically the Rodecaster Pro only has four audio inputs in terms of cabling. It, one can make the argument the USB-C and those type of things, but that's, again, a whole other conversation. Here, again, just show you kind of a close-up on the back of the, the units. I'm not using the snare because, again, I've already got the mix out because of the four, and that's set up with the uh, Rodecaster. So now what I'm doing here is I'm going into the iPad and I'm using an app called AUM. I've said it numerous times. If you've not used this app, please do a research on YouTube. Wonderful app. Basically what this allows me to do is route or bring the audio from the Rodecaster Pro into the iPad. And I'm basically setting up channels is what I'm doing. So here I'm showing you that it's showing all the different tracks on the Rodecaster. And this would apply to any audio interface if it's class compliant. That's the big catch. So what I'm going to do is basically set up the iPad without going into detail right now in this video. I can do that in another video separately. But I go in and create tracks. I then find, and I've been test, I just basically test, you know, what works uh, with the different channels and kind of play around uh, with that. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this portion up because I'm now going to the next part of the video. You'll hear me just kind of do some testing. All right. Thanks for watching. So what I'm doing in this portion here of this experiment is what I call testing. Uh, basically, I've got everything hooked up, and now it's pushing the various instruments and seeing where does it show up in AUM based on the tracks. So I'm, I'm basically setting some of the faders to make sure I can hear the audio because of how I have everything routed. Then it requires a little bit different setting up in terms of adjusting the audio interface. Now I just go through each one and find, find out which one is possibly duplicated. What I found out, and I'll talk about this later, there are some things that sit on both channels. So this here is where I, again, just testing things out, figuring out what my setup's gonna be. And then once I get that set up, I can actually then go into adding the effects that I'll talk about later. So I'm not going to leave a lot of this in the video because quite honestly, it's boring. But again, if anyone would like a, a video dedicated to setting this up, let me know and I'd be more than happy to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and get to my conclusions, final thoughts on this experiment. Right out the bat, I found a limitation with the Rodecaster Pro 2. And let me be clear, it's really a limitation with me because this is, again, I'm working with what I have. Please don't take this as, ah, oh, the Rodecaster Pro 2 is not a, a good audio interface. I'm using it beyond its use case scenario. So I need to be clear about that. Just because this has a limitation doesn't mean this is a bad device. So the limitation is if I were to take all of my four outputs and bring them into the Rodecaster Pro 2, I would not have any room for my mix out uh, in order to hear that. So right off the bat, this kind of answers my question in terms of if I wanted to do a scenario to bring all four into the iPad, I'm going to need a different audio interface for this purpose. And that'll be something I have to decide if I want to do. Uh, for me, this was just curious if I could even do it. With that out the way, minus that limitation, it works. 
So what I have found out, and again, another limitation, I'll get to that. So the kick, I'm on USB or channel 4, so I have that working. And let me bring up the audio just a little bit to hear in the background. Then on, so let me take a look back at the back here. So the kick is what I have going into the interface. The hi-hats, that's going out. And the FM drum. So the snare is being part of the main mix. And the tom and the um, cymbal here. So the kick is going into here. So what I'm able to do now is I'm just going to bring in and audio effects. I'm just going to use a reverb for now just to demonstrate, but I'm going to explore some other options that I can have. Let me make sure this is turned down first a little bit. So, and let's bring up the mix a little. That's not a good example. I mean, probably it's too much. But right there, I've got an option to add some more life to this impact because as you're aware of or if you don't know this is an analog drum excuse me an analog drum synthesizer so you have to work with the sounds that this device can make you can't bring in um, samples and there's no presets in here you're creating your own and that's one thing that I've noticed as I listen to reviews great device but at some point you could I'm just going to use the word get tired of it. I don't know that I would agree with it, but I understand what people are saying is you could exhaust the sounds. That's really the purpose of having, whether it's a pedal or in my particular case, the iPad, is I can now add some more. Let me find another, uh, just kind of doing this off of the cuff here. Um, let's see, one of the other ones that I like. It's a little bizarre. Uh, Rimdegar. Uh, let's let's see what we get in here. This might be a little bizarre. I mean, if you're into weird sounds and doing something different, this, again, in my particular scenario, this just opens up this impact with a ton of different things you can do. So combine with what you have here, Change the pitch a little. Yeah, you can get pretty creative. So that is really what I was trying to do. Okay, so we got our kick on uh, USB 4. So our snare 1 and 2. And let's see. So I don't have snare coming out, but it's still coming through the main mix. B bottom line that's what I'm after and I can do that so snare one and two are going through USB 3 um, USB 5 oh here's the other thing so here's the other I don't, let's see so Tom it looks like Tom is not something that can go th individual outs so Tom is gonna go through the main output but it's bleeding into lack of a better term into USB 3 and that's could be a limitation because now my toms are going to go through the same effect. So um, that might be something where having a dedicated audio interface with more channels, perhaps. And again, I'll have to do some more troubleshooting. Maybe I didn't see it on the other channels that I could pull. Once I got past seven, I think, um, that's starting to get into other things like the pads and the Rocaster Pro 2. So there's nothing there. So again, just a limitation with it. So that's something I have to keep in mind that basically these four are going to go through one channel, one effect. If, if I want that set up, great. If not, that's going to be um, a, a thing to deal with. All right, so the closed hat and open high hats or open hats, they're all on channel five. And again, same concept. I can just pick an effect, put it on here. And then the FM, oh, that's a bit loud, sorry. The FM drum, I think that's going to be very cool. Being able to run this through other um, FX on here that's gonna be pretty cool so that sits on channel 6 uh, for the FM drum and then obviously I could do main 1 and 2 for the mix if I needed to so at the end of the day um, I'm gonna say that it works with limitations and again that 
that's the cool thing about doing stuff like this. You try it out. It may not work. It may work, or it may work with, in this case, limitations, as I pointed out. I don't know what I'm going to do at the end of the day uh, because I like just to noodle and mess around. Um, there are options that I can get that aren't going to be ex as expensive as that Steinberg that I mentioned earlier. So that's something that I will have to, you know, make a decision. You know, do I want to bring in that piece of gear or can I work with the limitations that I have? Um, the one thing that I need to point out, if you did not know this, I can only run one audio interface at a time into an iPad. So I said earlier, I've got some smaller audio interfaces. I've got like a Behringer UMC 204. I've got a Novation 2x2. Trying to combine. Now, I don't know if I can do that on this end, but it's only going to read one. Because that was my other thought. I could, Because I've seen videos where they talk about expanding your current audio interface uh, setup. My problem is because I'm using the iPad, I can only have one audio interface. So I don't even think I could piggyback something together because the iPad's only going to see one. So that won't work for me. That's my story. That's my experiment. Um, I pose this question in a group, and sometimes it's just good to hook it up. Now, it's a mess. There's a lot of cables. Setting this stuff up, messing around, then tearing down, you're going to need a sandwich afterwards. <laughs> so, again, this is this is probably not ideal, but... I think for now, as I think about this, I will just stick with this um, and work around the limitations. And then if for some reason it gets frustrating, I, I, I outgrow it, then maybe down the road. Um, but here's the other thing, you know, what other pieces of kit do I have that I could do this with? Um, I'm thinking about the TR-8S and the MC-101. They're, they have outputs on here, um, but those have effects built in so there really isn't a need but again if for some reason I want to experiment then perhaps I could just swap this out and put in another kit and then maybe after a period of time I start to see that hey this is a bit of limitation the other thing I have to keep in mind is I'm trying to in this video present something to you so you can see so I'm not having the best audio for this video because I'm a little bit limited because I've already taken up all of my inputs, so normally I would have my microphone plugged into there. So you're hearing everything through the speaker, so that's why I mentioned this is not going to be the best produced. So if I'm just messing around here in the room and not doing it for YouTube, that's okay. This is not meant to push or say you have to do this, but if you have gear, consider looking at ways of making things possibly play with each other. If you've got an iPad and you've never dabbled in the iPad and you've got gear, it's a nice thing to add to maybe change things up a little bit. Maybe you will, you'll come up with a noise or a sound if you're into making presets and sample packs. Again, I mean, there's nothing wrong with pedals. I, I, everything that I've seen is awesome. I mean, that Chase Bliss habit. <laughs> uh, I'm never going to find anything that replicates that one for one in the iPad. But... If you have this, you, I mean, you li there are free apps. There are free pedals. If you don't want to put the money in it, you literally have something that you can tap into and try. And, and you know, if, if that's your thing, you're looking for some ideas, then maybe this gives you some, some things to consider. I, I hope this, uh, you know, helped out in some ways. Maybe it didn't. Maybe it was a waste of your time. If it was, next time you're out in Vegas, then uh, next, next round of drinks on me. This is Wabbit. I thank you for watching this long video on how it's going to be. But uh, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and get out there and have as much fun as possible. Catch you next video. Take care.